Hello, my name is Guy Levy. I'm third year student in computer science in the Academic College of Management. In this day, I am working as a QA automation engineer in BIMI. I'm Itamar Atzmoni, fourth year ALATS program, computer science student at the College of Management. I'm Paz Chaimovic, fourth year in ALATS program, computer science student at College of Management. I'm Shir Shveka, first year in ALATS program, computer science student at the College of Management. I'm Jonathan Birman, fourth year in ALATS program, computer science student at the College of Management. Hello, I'm Aviv Kainan, fourth year in ALATS program, computer science student at the College of Management. I'm Ron Greenberg, fourth year in ALATS program, computer science student at the College of Management. Today we're going to present you our final project in advanced software development course. We managed the project using the Scrum methodology and we used the JIRA tool for that. We wrote a list of issues that we'll need to implement, assigned issues to each teammate and divided the issues into sprints of work. Of course things changed with time and we adjusted ourselves according to the progress. The architecture consists of the following components. There are multiple agents, each one connecting to a Flygear instance. The agents were built using MVC. So we see that the model communicates with flight gear and can send commands and receive flight data in CSV format simultaneously. All agents communicate with the backend, which is the server of our application that also contains a database for storing data about airplanes and flights. Additionally, it contains an interpreter for the autopilot scripting language. The backend can send commands to a specific agent at any time, for example, flight instructions received from the joystick in the front end. In the front end, we can see all the different tabs of the GUI application and the communication of each one with the backend. Specifically for the flight playback tab, time capsule, we can connect to a local flight gear instance to actually watch the flight. In most of the demo videos, we're going to see that the setup will be built as follows. On the bottom left, you can see the backend console. On the top left, the front end window. And on the right, a window of a program called the VNC which we use to remotely control another computer running the agent. In this window, we can see the agent sprints on the left and the flight gear on the right. We're going to use the following scripts to run each part of the program. Both the agent and the backend have a regular running script and also a running script for the command line interface for debugging purposes. The front end has only one script. Let's start by running the backend. We can see it's loading. Now on the top left, we're going to run the front end and they have successfully connected. This is the fleet overview screen. We see here four of the parked planes. We don't have any active planes right now. And the fifth plane is on Iranian nuclear facilities. All this data is coming from the database, which we are going to see in a second. Here, the database on the airplanes table. Okay, let's continue and run the agent. After running the agent, we can start the flight here. We can see they have successfully connected. And now we're trying to connect to the backend. Now we're all ready and we can start the flight. Okay, so let's go to the teleoperation tab. 
we have a joystick to control the plane, we have a dashboard, and we can now choose an active plane. If we open the drop down we can see that our plane test appears, let's select it, and we can already see the values updating on the dashboard. We are now going to move the joystick. You can see it affects the plane in flight gear. And you can also see the set instructions sent from the front end in the back end console, and you can see that they were passed to the Asian console and then to flight gear. Let's try to move a slider. You can again see the movement on the plane and the instructions in the consoles. Now we are going to demonstrate a takeoff using an autopilot script. We can open a script file. Let's select the script file. And you can see that it was loaded into the text area. Let's change the maximum altitude at which we want the script to stop navigating the plane to 500, for example. Now let's go to fly gear as we first have to auto start the plane's engine. Now we can go back and run the script. You can see the script output in the backend console, it prints the current altitude of the plane. And you can see that the plane is accelerating. You can see all the instructions received from the backend in the agent console. And the plane will be in the air in a few seconds. We will wait until the altitude reaches 500. And here you can see that the backend prints done as according to the script, and if we switch to fleet overview for a second and zoom in on the plane we can see that its angle is updated as it is currently rotating Now we are in the monitoring tab. We are choosing the active plane that we want to test. On the right side of the screen we have a dashboard with the watches that shows details about the plane, like high, speed, direction and more. Above the dashboard we see a joystick that we can't control but only see it's moving according to the plane. On the left side of the screen we have all the features and we can choose one to see his line graph and also the most correlative feature, line graph. And here there is the, also the anomaly detector. We can choose one feature to show and we can see how it is changing with the time and also the most correlative feature to him. We can choose also another feature like the airspeed and it is also changing with the time. In the bottom of the screen, we can see the backend getting commands from the frontend all the time, and these commands also reach the agent, which returns CSV lines that we divided to the different locations on the dashboard. Okay, first we see the monitoring. We can see all the features. Now we're going to go to the teleportation and, tr and try to move the joystick gently to create anomalies. Well, not so gently. 
here we can see uh, the features getting changed, but the points are still all right. It's still normal points. We don't have any yellow point yet. It means, of course, no anomaly. And now we're starting to see the yellow points, which are the anomalies, and the plane is going to crash. Okay, so we are on the fleet overview, and we are going to do an example with two planes on the map, test and AF1. So we are going to run the flight gear, and wait while it's loading. Okay, so now the test plane is active and green. Now we're gonna run the flight gear in the second PC. Okay, so now both of the planes are active and green and we will fly the planes using the interpreter and we will be right back. As you can see now, the planes update their position and angle on the map with each update of the map. In this part, we not connected to the simulator. We just choose a flight uh, algorithm. For example, this one, we chose a hybrid algorithm. We can see that there is the name of the algorithm. Now we choose airplane from the list. Uh, and then the flight number of this uh, airplane. Uh, we can press play and then we see all the uh, details of the airplane show in the dashboard. We can also see the graph and the anomalies. Uh, we can see the two correlated uh, features. Uh, we can see that there is anomaly uh, uh, detected in this part. Completed play playback. In this part, we will show a flight that was over, and we can see the flight also in the graph and also in the uh, simulator. Okay, after we open the application, for default, this is a hybrid algorithm. We can move the time uh, and then press play. We can see the details on the dashboard, the height, the speed, the roll, all is changed according to the uh, CSV file. We can see also that uh, the simulator is update on real time according to the CSV file. Uh, we can see the joystick is moving, 
uh, we can move the time in the timeline we can also change the speed of the video To reflect, we all learned a lot in this project. We learned and practiced software development and project management in Scrum methodology using Jira tools. We learned to collaborate in the team and to manage complex source code with Git and GitHub. We used various design patterns to solve complex software issues. We learned how to develop communication protocols over TCP IP network for command and control and data transfer. And most importantly, this project really emphasized the importance of designing and planning in advance. We intend to use the skills and know-how we obtain in this project in our future software development projects and teamwork. The sky's the limit. 